Hey, Michael, would you marry me and my husband and become our thruple? No. Oh, thank God. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, hosted by two over 50 gay men, and all about things that are important to those of us over 50 gay men. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And all season, we've been talking about the various different companionships that men our age find themselves in or are seeking out. And today, we're going to talk about marriage. Getting married, staying married, wanting to be married after 50. And the big question, is it really worth it? So we're going to discuss why some men our age choose to be married or in committed relationships and why others don't. We're also going to discuss the different pros and cons of being married. And finally, we're going to have a little discussion about those unconventional relationships that men our age find themselves in, you know, like uh, thruples or open marriages. So stick around. We've got a lot to talk about. All right, Michael, let's talk about marriage. And before we begin, I think it's important for all of our new listeners or people that are watching us who don't know us to know that I, Tom, am married and I've been in a very committed relationship with my husband for almost 36 years. And Michael is a single guy, right? So let's talk about marriage, Michael. What do you think? Um, is there a reason why you're not married? Um I have been in the past, um, prior to it being legal, um, actually had a ring exchange on a Christmas day one, uh, one year and we were together for quite some time, but, um, okay. How long is quite some time? Almost five years. Okay. I know that's nothing compared to your 36, but let's be real in gay time. That's like what a century. Um, yeah. But you know what? It's not. And let's talk about that too, because really there is no difference between gay marriage and marriage, this right? Is very true. There are certain people who are commitment people. There are guys, there are women who are committed people. There are a lot of other people who don't want to be in commitments or who don't want to be married. Um, and I think that that's like one of the most important things to start at. At It's an individual thing, right? Um, like I said, I've been married forever. Most of our friends are all married, have been in committed relationships. When I look at the people who are in these relationships, one thing is what was modeled for us as we were growing up. Yes, there was not anyone out there, gay men who were married, that we could look at when we were younger. However, my parents were married until they died. My parents, my uh, husband's parents were married until they died. Everyone in my family was married. There were no divorces. Everyone in our neighborhood, there was one couple that got divorced. So I think that has a lot to do with it. I mean, do you think so or no? Um, I mean, I'm sure it's part of it. You know, we tend to model our lives after what we see as we grow up. But for right. me, I'm a commitment centric individual. I prefer being in a committed relationship. But um, uh, after a, you can have um, uh, all you want. Just because you've never seen me in one doesn't mean you know. So well, let me let me but, explain. But, okay, uh, that. go ahead. So for me, after having had a, that relationship, it forced me to evaluate my part in it, what went wrong, and what was no longer acceptable for me in the context of a committed relationship. So for me, I think there has to be a lot of stars aligning for me to make that step again. And the bottom line for me is trust. Um, and someone who's capable of telling the truth, which I know in your relationship is a huge thing, right? Well, well, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I get that. There are certain things that, you know, really kill a relationship, you know, trust and people, someone cheating on you and lying to you and beating you, or like all kinds of things. Yes, there are reasons why to, it's time to walk away from a relationship. However, from the time I was young until now, I see so many single guys who are saying like, oh, I want to be in a relationship and then start dating someone. And the moment 
there is something difficult. The moment that there is a little bit of a wall that gets put up, they run and they're like, okay, we're done. I'm done with this. I'm not saying it's you. I'm just saying that I have seen this over oh, I, and I over and too. over. I, I mean, I've seen it my entire life with other single guys who it's like, oh, I want a relationship. And then they get into a relationship and they're like, oh, I want to be single. Um, well, and that's the, the just thing that's is, human nature, you know, but, it just is. Uh, but what, what, what I see happening out there is that, yeah, these guys are saying, like, oh, I want to be in a relationship. But like I said, the moment there is something difficult, they turn and run away. It's like, oh, I don't like that. Or wait a minute, I'm not the most important person. I don't get to do what I want to do. No, being in a committed relationship, being married is so much freaking work. It's tough. And you have to learn how to give and take. I mean, I know when I get to step forward and be like, okay, it's going to be all about me now. And then I see when it's my husband's time to step forward, we have to, you know, do a lot of things that we don't like to do. In fact, you understand this. My husband loves Mexican food. <laughs> I don't. Do you know how often I go out for Mexican food? Yes, I do. Because I used to go with you. Until you said, no, I'm not going to do this because yeah. I don't want to do it. And like, oh, oh. Okay, great. Um, but that's that's the whole point of being in a relationship and learning when you need to step back, when you need to bend, when you need to give, when you need to take. And there are some major obstacles that you have to go through in life. And there were plenty of years, speaking from my experience, that it was like, wow, is this worth it? it I don't know. You know, we start young. And when you're younger, it's a lot easier to bend and give and take and um, because you're not as so set in your ways. And that's something we need to discuss about now for guys like us over the age of 50. Is it worth getting into a marriage? Because so many guys, and, and you can attest to this, you're set in your ways. You like to do things your way. You are very, you know, particular about your home, your things. And then thrusting together and like, I think that might, might cause a lot of friction in two men over 50 getting married or getting together. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think that creates a bigger problem for those of us who have been single for, you know, for me, it's been probably about six years now. So you do get set in a groove and, you know, you come and go as you please. And bringing somebody into that is definitely more of a challenge. Um, but for me, I know that that's what I want and I'm willing to sort of fight through that. Um, and to, and to talk through those issues, what I, what I find in, um, like guys our age is that, um, especially if you've been single for a while, it seems there's a harder time talking about personal stuff. It's funny. I went to trivia night last night and, uh, a couple of guys were talking cause they had been dating people for a few months. And then all of a sudden they were just ghosted. Um, and one of the guys was like, I sent him a text the night before and said, you know, let me know if you want to get together. And the guy's like, great, I, I'll send you a text tomorrow. And then he never heard from him again. And in his head, he's thinking, did he die? <laughs> you know, what's going on? So he sent him a couple of texts. Obviously, they're going through. The phone is still on. But the guy just completely ghosted him. And it was somebody our age. And I, I marvel at that situation because you would think as we get older, Talking about uncomfortable situations would be easier, but for a lot of guys our age, it's not. And, you know, we have to take that into consideration, I think. Yeah, I don't think it ever gets easier to talk about those kind of things. But like I said earlier, that that's what I keep seeing out there. The moment somebody hits a little difficulty or a place that they feel uncomfortable, they're out. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the, the saying is, if you really want something, you will have it. You will go and get it. So I don't think these people really want to be in those committed relationships. And, and that's fine. You know, we all have our individual wants and likes, and it's all about our choices. A lot of people just don't want to be in that kind of relationship. But so many people do. In fact, we had friends that got married a couple months ago. 
They both were in previous relationships. One guy got divorced and the other uh, lost his husband uh, after 40 years. Those guys are obviously commitment guys, right? They want to be in that committed relationship. They understand the give and take of being in a relationship, of stepping forward, stepping back, bending, give and take. Um, and I just think like the guys that you were just talking about, they just really don't want it. As much as they say, oh, I want to be in a relationship, you can tell, no, you don't. Because if um, you really did... I, I can't say in this instance it is, and I've known these guys for probably about a year now. And when someone else ghosts you, that's not necessarily something that's I, within your control. No, I'm not talking about that person. I'm talking about the guy who ghosted. He, oh, he hit him. a wall. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. Got that. Yeah. Okay. There was something that was like, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be uncomfortable. I don't want to deal with this. I'm out. Right. It's like, great. So those are the guys that really don't want to be in relationships, and that's fine. But, you know, don't, like for your friend, don't muck it up for your friends. They want to find somebody. And you, you know what's tough about that situation? Um, because, you know, the more you get hurt, the higher the wall gets. And so for this particular person, my friend, not the person who ghosted him, it makes him less receptive to getting into the situation again, which kind of sucks. Because, you know, there's this double-edged sword. You want to get into it, and then you, you go through a situation like that where somebody ghosts you, and it's like, why am I bothering? So sometimes being single is easier because you don't have to build up an expectation. You don't have to be going in that direction, that it just is what it is on your daily basis. So, you know, it's, it's not as easy as um, or as simple as, well, if you want it, you would do it. Because there's a whole lot of other factors involved with guys our age that uh, doesn't make it as easy as one might think. I understand that, but I also understand that there are there are guys out there who are looking for that, and I think you have to start choosing the right people, and you kind of have to, you know, when we were twenty, we could have all kinds of qualifications we're looking for in whoever it is, and I think can't be quite as picky as you're getting older, you know, like the pool is getting smaller and smaller. Um, so you might need to open up your eyes and, and be receptive to more and different people. Absolutely. But there's also the idea of, I don't want to settle because, you know, we live in Palm Springs. There's a lot of guys here who, you know, just are happy dating and, and that has to be okay. But just, right. just be upfront about it and be honest about it. Like this guy who ghosted my friend, just say, you know what, I, I don't want to really get any more serious. So let's just be friends. That's it. There are people who are commitment people who really do want this and they'll do what they need to do to get into that place. And there are other people who don't want commitments and fine, live your life dating, live your life hooking up, do whatever you, makes you happy, right? So, I mean, bottom line is, everyone's different. Um, but not everybody is right for everybody else. Um, but when you are married, it's not all perfect either. That's what we need to talk about next is, is it worth getting into a marriage? Because what are the benefits? What are the negatives? What's the pros? What's the cons? Um, there has to be some, right? Um, oh, without a doubt. So, you would like to be in a relationship? Why? What What are the things you're looking for? What is, what's going to, what's a marriage or a committed relationship going to give you that you're missing now? Companionship, intimacy, um, trust, you know, knowing someone has your back. It's hugely important. You know, I, I think that's the foundation of any good relationship. And obviously somebody who is willing to communicate and push through the hard stuff is, uh, is challenging. It's tough, right. tough to find. Let me tell you, trust me when I tell you, it's tough to find. Yeah, but Michael, trust me, being in married is not that easy either. Um, it's a lot of work, like I said, a lot of work. And I, I just don't think a lot of single guys quite get that. And the moment there's work, they're out, they're, they're gone. Um, but there are a ton of pros to being, you know, married, especially after 50. As you said, companionship is a huge thing because as we're aging, our friend circles are smaller, we're losing family members. Um, 
it's harder for us to get out and go travel the world and do all of those things. So having that person to be our companion through these golden years of ours it is a very uh, big pro, I, I think. Um, but also financial reasons, a lot of, you know, getting married, um, legal and financial reasons is a huge pro uh, for being married, especially if you own properties and, you know, things about your will and all of that thing. Um, way before we could ever get married, it was so important for us to do that. Oh, I can't think of what it was. What was the thing everyone did before marriage? A domestic partnership? Yes, domestic partnership, uh, so that, you know, we could get our insurance through each other or, you know, that we had some sort of rights. Huge thing for guys over 50 um, getting married, the medical reasons, like if my husband goes into the hospital, I'm the one making the decisions. Um, But if you're not married, you you can't do that, you know. Uh, Who's going to pull the plug? (laughs) Wow, that got dark really fast. <laughs> That's funny. It got really light Whoa. for me over oh here. Oh, <laughs> my God. No, but you know what I'm saying? is like making those really difficult decisions. Before marriage was available, I watched some gay couples, older gay couples, where like all of a sudden the family member had to come in and they weren't accepting the gay partner and they weren't hearing what they wanted. It it was really messy. So that's a huge pro for getting married or being in this committed relationship after 50 because health, so many health issues uh, are going to come up if they're not already up, you know, in our lives. Um, So yeah, uh, medical, legal, financial, there's a lot of pros. However, there's also a lot of cons as well, you know, uh, like we said, to getting married after 50 and you've already, you've lived so many years on your own, that butting of heads of like, wait a minute, I want to do things my way, but I want to do things my way. I like it this way. I want to go to eat Mexican food. I only want to eat Italian food, whatever it is, you know, um, that's a, a real con, I would imagine. What's something that you fear about in thinking about getting married? What's a con that you you would think? Honestly, I don't have a fear. Well, okay, I I take that back. I don't have a fear in all that external stuff. What I have a fear in, and this is an issue for me, and usually within the first month or two of dating somebody, um, I make them aware of this, that trust is the most important thing to me just because of previous relationships. And I just ask that they be completely upfront and honest with me and don't lie to me. If if you want to go and fuck around, go and fuck around. But I need to be pro- provided that information so then I can make my choices right. of whether I want to pursue or not. And for me, that's my biggest fear is to uh, l- put my trust into somebody and then have that violated again because it's a tough one. Right. But the external stuff, like I, you know, I'll go out to Mexican food with you and your husband again. Do I need to do it every week? No. Because I can always find something somewhere that I can eat, even if it's just a salad, and I'm happy with it. Because a lot of times it's about the company, not the food. So well, that's definitely know, the, all the external what it stuff. Is. Eh, it doesn't fear me. It's the bigger. It's the deeper stuff that is what. Yeah, know. but w- what about you know the thing is once you get married, you're you're a package deal, right? And right now you have the, a very free life where you want to go out, you go out. You want to go to do something, you go do something. Um, it's not that way in a marriage, you know? Um, it's like, if you were to call me and say like, Hey, you want to do this, uh, Thursday night? I'd be like, Oh, well, let me check with my husband. You know, not that he has to go with me, but I'd be like, Hey, do you have plans? Mind if I go out? That's really part of being married. You, you are no longer this single entity. You have to take someone else into consideration. It's like, you know, and exactly. To me, that's never been an issue, no matter, even if I'm just dating somebody, you know, regard, including the long-term relationships that I was in. Yeah. That becomes an immediate for me, that there's somebody else now in my life, and I consider them standing right next to me in any given situation and take them into consideration. So for me personally, that has never been an issue. 
But, you know, I find that that is an issue for a number of single friends that we have where, you know, they're like, well, why? Why do you have to ask him? Or what does it matter to him? Just come. Be like, well, my husband's not feeling well, so we're just going to stay home. Well, then you come. It's like, no, my husband's not feeling well. I'm going to stay here with him. You know, I think single guys don't quite see that next thing because they are so used to just worrying about themselves, you know, and that is not only a pro, but that's a huge con in being marriage that you have to think about someone else at all times, everything you're doing, you know, even like this morning, I got up really early for whatever reason, it was like four o'clock in the morning. I couldn't turn on lights. I couldn't be, you know, I'm going to make a ton of (laughs) noise and do whatever I want. Go make a blended fruit drink, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I have to. (laughs) <laughs> think about somebody else. It's yeah. it's that I think is one of the biggest cons for single guys um that I see is it's like, oh, but I don't wanna always be thinking about someone else because all I do is think about me. You know, it's like, mm, well, then maybe you're not the marriage material. Maybe that isn't what you want. Well, in all you know? honesty, I've seen marriages where it's the complete opposite at well, as well, where they don't take their partner into consideration, where they will sit and fight in front of other people because one wants to do this and one wants to do that. So it's, it's, it's not an exclusive single thing. I'm not saying that, yeah. but I mean, how healthy is that marriage? How healthy is that relationship? I, I can only see what I see, you know, what goes on behind their closed doors and how they work things out. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, um, but if you're out in public fighting each other and telling each, like, that's not a healthy relationship. That's not- more than likely. It's there's some stuff that needs to be worked through no, by the two, and doing it in public in front of other people is definitely not the the ideal situation. And I have literally said to people who are doing that, it's like you do realize there are other people here, right? Right. So take that home, because then none yeah. of us want to hear it, and you're causing a lot of stress. That is a huge it's ugly red flag for that marriage yeah. or that relationship um cuz that's just not what but you do there are two <laughs> i can point out at the top of my head who have been together for well over a decade and that's that's their dynamic um and it's it's tough i would see and for me i would rather be single than to be in that type of relationship sure i yeah. i get that uh but you know i i if it is working for them, okay, more power to them. They found each other. Great. But I, I just can't see that being a... I'm with a, you, right? I'm right there with you on that. healthy thing. Yeah. Especially to sustain it. And you, you just can't, you know, because again, something major is going to come up. And if you're just fighting about whatever crap in front of people, and then some major issue comes up, how are you guys going to come together and deal with that, you know, and that's what marriage is about, always coming together and dealing with whatever life is throwing at you, which is also a huge pro, you know, as you said, the companionship to have someone there for you. Um, In fact, tell you a little quick story before I was married, before I met my husband, um, you know, I was living this amazing, crazy life, whatever. And I had just moved to LA and I, I, was letting go of that lifestyle because it was not sustainable. It wasn't what I wanted. Um, and I was trying to just be, you know, in my mind, a normal person and do normal things and whatever. And it was so difficult. And I remember throwing myself on my bed, you know, in a very, you know, <laughs> dramatic way. Cause I would expect that's... nothing less. Exactly. <laughs> And I'm sure I had this fantastic <laughs> outfit on as I threw myself down. I'm thinking but chiffon, I rem- so that when you be. threw yourself on the bed, it just flowed. Especially at you. that age where it yeah. just hugged me in all the right places. Um, but I remember throwing myself on the bed going like, I can't do this alone anymore. I can't. I, I need somebody to help me. And, you know, very shortly later, I met Scott, um, came into my life. And I was like, yeah, I needed someone to help me when things got difficult, but I have to be there to help him. I have to step up and be like, okay, grab his hand, let's do this together, you know, or you're not alone. Um, And like I said, there are days that he gets to be the sad one and the days that I get to be the sad one and we're just there for each other. So 
a lot of pros, but a lot of cons in being married, especially at this age, because it just gets more and more difficult as we age, you know. Um, but for me, it's totally worth it. Um, not for everybody, but for me, I I think that it is totally worth it to be over 50, to be gay, and to be in a committed relationship well whether married or not but i love being married especially like i said for all of those legal and financial and medical reasons that are it's really necessary okay let's now talk about some of the more unconventional relationships that gay men over 50 find themselves in you know things like um open marriages or throuples or i don't know what else is out there uh you might know more of this than i do um Polyamorous, you, which is okay. more than three, right? You know. Oh my god! As, it's as many as you want. Imagine that. <clears throat> yeah, I could not imagine that. <laughs> it's a lot of juggling of balls, both figuratively and literally. I guess it's just you know. Again, marriage is really difficult, and it's hard to juggle another person's emotions and feelings and whatever else they're going through problems, you know, as, and then to juggle my own, I can't even imagine bringing more and more people into this. I would be exhausted, but uh, apparently it works for some people. Exactly. And, you know, I think in any situation, we just have to look back, stand back and look at it and say, it works for them. So there should never be any judgment on somebody else's relationship or whether they choose to be married or not be married. Because I think as a community, we tend to do that a lot. Regardless of what portion of the community we sit in, we tend to judge the other ones. So, you know, if we could take a little bit of the judgment away and just say, if it works for them, awesome. And if they're happy, if you're not happy, then maybe reevaluation is a thing you should do. Right. Well, I, I also feel like, you know, Unless you're hurting someone else, unless somebody in your polyamorous relationship or your partner is hurt or unhappy, if you're happy, but everyone else is unhappy, then th there might be an issue there. Um, and like I said, if you, as long as you're not hurting someone and you're not doing something illegal, then you know, you do you. Um, I'm going to do me and I'm going to do my husband as well, but um, I'm <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> literally again literally um but i you know again you you are probably seeing more of this out there than i am because what as i've said mentioned a lot um our circles are basically married guys who've been together forever uh we tend to just fall into these circles of people like us but that's kind of the nature of the human, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. You sort of find your tribe and, you know, you stick around people who are like-minded. It's, it's just who we, who we are right. and what we do. Um, right. yeah. Although I have witnessed um, a couple that was together for a very long time who brought in a third to create a throuple. Um, and... You know, there. Talk about judgment. There we all are. You know, like, oh yeah, this isn't gonna work. You know, within months, that marriage was over. the The new person went with one of them. They left, leaving this poor person all by themselves. Who thought, like, what happened to my thirty year marriage? You know, so it it doesn't work for everybody. No. And I think, you know what happens in those situations? I think it's been my experience because you know me, I ask a bazillion questions. So I've known people in the situations in the open relationship for a very long time, since the nineties, when I moved to LA, I experienced them all the time that there's an, what tends to happen is there's an issue in the relationship that they're not dealing with. Yeah. And they think bringing in a third will right. help solve that issue. And obviously it only magnifies it because now you're bringing someone else into your environment and jealousies happen, you know, insecurities happen because inevitably the one is attracted to another one more than the third. You know, if you go into a couple, and I've been in the situation where I'm definitely more attracted to one of them, and the other one is just kind of there. Um, <laughs> and oh, 
I, okay. it, it may sound horrible, but it's the situation that it is, no. you know? Okay, I get it. <clears throat> um, and I, I take that back. It doesn't sound horrible. It's just the situation that it is. And, and you could feel the tension in the room. Right. And, uh, you know, which is why I stopped doing that back in the 90s, because it would, it would always create a funky situation. Sometimes the partner would get up and leave the room. And, you know, my first response, because uh, the caretaker in me kicks in and is like, is he all right? Do you need to go check on him? It's like, oh, he's fine. He does this all the time. I'm like, ooh, okay. Well, I'm not fine because it's, yeah. you just put me in the middle of a situation that I'm not comfortable in. And right. um, so I think if you are in an open relationship, and again, this is just from my experience, um, and you choose to go that route, that maybe couples counseling before introducing a third might be a good idea just to work through whatever it is that got you guys to that place. Yeah, I agree. And then move move and, forward from there. And I would think um, that you need to really like sit down and like let's talk this through. Like, are there rules? Are you know? I don't know. I I would really want to make sure that everything was all my eyes were dotted and all my T's were crossed. So now I'm um, going to ask you a question because you guys have been together so long. Has this ever been a conversation that has come up with you and like maybe you guys are having a rough patch or challenged in you're not communicating well and has the subject ever been broached? And if it is, how did you handle it being in a, in a, in a spoken monogamous relationship that you both have that agreement on? Okay. There's a lot there. Yes. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> first of all, um, I want to address when you said, you know, if you're in a rough patch and you're not communicating, whatever. When we are in one of those positions, places, or, or when we have been, being in a really committed, love-filled relationship, you can then say to yourself, it's going to pass. and in a couple of days, we're going to be laughing and, you know, it's going to be great because you know that there are these ebb and flows and tides and good times and bad times. So, and I know this isn't just me. These are some of the other uh, friends that we have who are in these long-term relationships. We know that, yeah, right now I could fucking kill my husband. He's such an asshole. But I know... Tomorrow, the two of us are going to be laughing about something and just rolling around and I'm, we're going to be cuddling and watching some movie because the bad times aren't forever. Right. Uh, so, so I, I got to go a little deeper then because yeah. um, as much the one substantial relationship that I had in my life that was almost five years, um, initially, you know, I, we lived in LA in the 90s and the there was gay everywhere you know that's when west hollywood was thriving and you could seriously right. go to the supermarket and get laid it, it wasn't a challenge um but once i made that commitment in my relationship and i loved him more than i had ever loved in my life I, for the first time i understood why people write music about love and why there's poetry i got it but that didn't take away you know the fact that i'm a guy i'm human I see somebody, a situation arises, and I'm like, I could do this, nobody would know. But then, after making that commitment, I had this thing that I did in my head, and it was, would this hurt Bob? And the answer was yes, of course. And from right. that moment on, anytime that situation arose, there wasn't even a question of which way I was going to go, and that was home, you know? So, right. has that, especially early on in your relationship, did you ever experience that moment where you had that epiphany, where it was like, oh... This will never be worth it. You know, a bag of Cheetos as opposed to, you know, this, this sort of fine dinner that you have sitting at home waiting for you. Is it, is it worth it? You ha you, did you ever have those moments or am I just sort of a unicorn in that? Well, I don't think you're a unicorn, but again, we have discussed a lot of, about me and I was not the guy who was out fucking at the grocery store. That never happened. I never had sex with anyone I didn't know. Uh, people had to court me and work really hard to get a piece of me. Um, so no, those that was never part of who I was. I don't think I ever, especially in the beginning, like, why would I want to do that? I 
we're having this, and you know, the beginning of a relationship, the first few years of relationship are just magical. Yeah. And it's, oh, I can't get enough of this person. And of course, we were young and, you know, looked great. So yeah, let's be naked all the time. And all, you know, so no, I never experienced that, that at all. How about your husband? Um, did you guys, does, did he ever talk to you about that stuff? Like him experiencing that, him having... He had me. Why would he? Um, <laughs> well, all righty then. No. Okay. And again, you know, we t talked earlier in, in today's show about that there are commitment people and there are non-commitment people. My husband was in a 10-year relationship before he and I got together. So he's definitely a commitment person. Um, so no. That's I, funny. I, I've known him such a long time and I never knew that. Yeah. Um, well, because why would he talk about <laughs> someone before me? <laughs> Oy. Life started when he met me. Okay. Um, but now let's get back to your question about the thruple. Have we ever discussed that? Have we ever, like, so obviously the answer is going to be no, but we, um, no. We have seen, you know, people that, like I said, we saw a couple become a thruple. We have seen people trying open marriages, but we've discussed that not about, oh, let's do that. That would be awesome. Um, but we've discussed there's something wrong there. You know, there there's an issue in this relationship that they are seeking to fill. Yeah. There's a, there's some sort of problem that, you know, um, like, yeah, we might have problems, but we're going to figure out what it is, how to fix it. Um, we're not going to run the moment that there's an obstacle. Uh, plenty of times that, yeah, I'd love to have just run or whatever, um, but no. And seriously, why would I bring on other people? <laughs> it's too much work is one. And I want all the attention over here. No, there is like, that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't want you giving anything over there. And in speaking about these thruples and open relation open marriages for gay men over 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 then you also have to think about like it when you're 20 okay what do you have you know your ikea furniture and you know <laughs> a backpack but like now we're talking about properties and homes and investments and how does that like when you bring in a thruple and you you know the three of you get married and like, who, how do you divide this shit up? Like who gets the silver? So unless I'm you know, wrong, I don't think the three of you could get married. That third person would always be on the sort of peripheral because that would be right. polygamy. But right? if, but if I'm coming into a relationship where they've got multiple, you know, homes and they've got shitload of money and lots of investments, I want to be a part of this as well. Yeah. You know, I, I would think to be like, yeah, I want my name on the house. I want my name on that car. I want, you know, my investment. Otherwise, why would somebody put so much into a relationship at this age? Yeah, I'm saying, you know, if there's really not any kind of plus, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do know what you're saying. Um, my mind doesn't work that way. Like when, if, if I go into a relationship, those are the, those are the things on the really far back burner um, that at some point would, you know, obviously become an issue the longer the relationship went, but that's never in the front of my mind. So um, right, but I totally I think, get though, what you're saying though. Yeah. I mean, a, as a responsible adult of this age, those things can't be on the back burner anymore. I mean, What's really important is like, okay, so I'm, you know, over 50, I'm over 60, I'm over 70. I have to make sure that I am financially stable, that I'm going to be able to take care of myself for the rest of my life because so many men our age and older are retiring or they're living on fixed incomes or, you know, they are living off their investments. And if I'm going to bring in somebody else, I want to make sure that they're not going to be getting their hands on my stuff and... I don't know. I think it's, again, as the responsible adult of this age, those things do have to be thought of. Um, I, I don't know. I, I could be, I, I know I'm not alone in this. Yeah, well, um, again, but, if, you're, if you're in a marriage with somebody else and you decide to bring in a third, I'm not sure that third will ever have 
right? I mean, unless they move in and you're together for years, and then in the state of California, well, what mean, is it, palimony or that still exists, where if you like yeah. live with somebody and don't get married, yeah, um, I mean that that is the case. Or that if you or, if you have assets that you want to protect, you have them sign a prenup or whatever a, a pre. Well, okay, up. so then so then let's talk about that too. You know, at this age. Um, I think most men, uh, successful men, are are going to have to have prenups. You know, you're not going to be able to, because that would be like bringing two sixty year lives together. Yeah. You know, so yeah, there would have to be so much that goes into that. I mean, again, for Scott and I, you built it we, together. Well, well, thirty five years is is. <laughs> Is a long construction period. It's a long time. Yeah, but we also, you know, we did come to the table with stuff yeah, as absolutely. Well, you know, yeah. Um, it's interesting because so, I, I had this conversation seriously this weekend. Um, went out to dinner and somebody brought up this uh, woman who works with a friend of mine. Joined us for dinner because she's going through a divorce, and she brought up if I ever get married again, we're having a prenup, and. I said, mm, I don't. I don't think I would be married then. I would just say, well, let's continue dating because um, I don't think I would want to exist in that. And again, that's just me. I know my mind works very differently than other people, but uh, I don't think I would go into a relationship and somebody says, oh, would you mind signing this prenup before we get married? I would just say, let's not get married. I'm good with that. Let's just be who we are and stay in a committed relationship without the the marriage. That's just me. Again, okay, I'm, I'm, I might be crazy in regard to that, but that's just me. So what if you meet some guy, 60-something years old, who, you know, has built an incredible life, and you fall in love with him, and he's like, you know, let's get married so that we do have the benefits of being married. Um, but, you know, I do need to sign this prenup because, you know, like my whatever home I'm going to leave to my kids. Maybe he's got kids. I'm going to, you know, this investments are for whatever. But from this moment on, the things we build together will be ours together. And you would not do that? No. I would say, let's just continue to be what we are and leave it at that. Um, just because again, I, I know people change and you really don't know people, but I, I, I just wouldn't feel comfortable doing that because... To me, it um, signifies a level of distrust, which I get. I get it because I, I know how people are. But for me, it just wouldn't be a situation. See, again, it goes back to personal choice and what works for us, right? right. I, I wouldn't sign a prenup. I would stay in the relationship. It would be what it was. And if, if you wanted to give me power of attorney over specific things, then you could drop that paperwork and I'll happily sign it. Um, that's how I would feel about it. Okay. I mean, I, I could see... You know, not wanting to do a prenup if you're in your 20s or even your 30s. But as you start building your life, um, you just have to protect yourself because, you know, you could be a gold digger who's like, yeah, I'm going to love you. And then a year later, you're like, I'm putting you in a home and I'm taking all your right. stuff. And let's be real. There are a lot of those people out there, which is for me why I would say, you know what? I don't need to do that. Um, and let's just keep it what it is and continue to date because... For me, a prenup signifies uh, we may break up at some point. And if, I, if I'm going to make that step to marriage again, um, there would be no, oh, this is going to end at some point. This would be, this is it. And every day I is going to be, we're going to be a married couple. And every morning yeah. we wake up, we, re we make that commitment again. And that's how we go through our day. Um, I mean, I get that. But again, as the responsible adult of this age... I think, you know, you got to give a little bit and be like, yeah, okay, this does make a little bit more sense at the moment. I don't know. I just don't want and for you me, to... And for me, giving a little bit would be staying in the relationship and say, let's just keep it as it is and whatever you want me to have control over. Right. We could sign documents and, you know, we'll take it from there. But marriage is a whole different step. And I feel like regardless of what you have, if you're going, this is again, this is me. Um, if you're going into it, you should have the mentality, this is for life. And a prenup somehow, to me, undermines that idea a little bit. So I would be more than content staying in the relationship and 
just living with it like that. Like, you know, like we did before we had the right to marry. That would be okay with me. Okay. Well, you know, great. As we keep saying, more power to you. Um, you do you. Right. I just don't want you to uh, close off a whole section of men out there who yeah. are going to and I wouldn't you know, again I wouldn't require that it just we we just wouldn't go into the legal marriage aspect it would be again because you know legal marriage to us is really new um so you know I've lived most of my life without that idea but knowing when I'm in a relationship I'm in the relationship and it's all of me that's there and it's a hundred percent commitment and um right yeah. again i just worried about you because you know that. again the the marriage thing it is going to bring a lot of pros that we talked about uh, you know insurance and um you know really securing you but if you're like no i'm not going to sign that cuz whatever I, are you going to miss out on some of those other pros i just want you to think it through i want everyone to think it through but as we keep saying this is all about individual choice absolutely you know, whether you want to be married, whether you think it's worth it, or whether you don't, okay, whatever. You know, whether you want to be in a thruple or an open marriage, as long as you're not hurting other people or the other people in your little group there, great. You do you, you know. Um, we'll continue to do in us. And while you're doing you, turn down the judgment on other folks who you may see in a relationship that's different than yours or who are not in a relationship and just allow them to be them. Totally. <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's the yeah. same thing. We all, we all want that, but we don't necessarily all give it in every moment because we have a tendency to be a little judgy as a community. And, you know. Nothing wrong as with we get, being a little judgy. As we get older, you know, hopefully we judge a little bit less because we've been around a little more and we have a little bit more understanding. Hopefully. Not always the case, but hopefully. Right. Hopefully. You know, Michael and I really love doing the show that we're doing. It, It's just awesome to be able to bring our voices, our over 50 gay male voice to the conversation here. And we really wouldn't be able to do it without your support out there, you know, you watching or listening to our show really costs you nothing. And we are definitely not getting paid to do this. But there is one way that you could support us by helping to allow us to continue to bring these shows to people out there. And the way to do that would be by joining our Patreon. When you join our Patreon, you'll get exclusive access to bonus content like our Savage Side Eye, monthly Q&As, and early access to our episodes. And we'll also invite you to join our private Facebook community where you guys yourselves can have conversations like Tom and I do and talk about your thoughts and your feelings and do that in a safe environment. Yeah, so please click the link below in the episode description and join our Patreon today. All right, Michael. So I think we've talked enough about marriage. Um, so what do you think? Are you leaning towards it? Are you leaning away from it? I've what do you always think? been running towards it. Well, keep running, <laughs> hopefully one day. Um, but, you know, I do want all these guys to be run by me first. Uh, so I want to check them out to make sure. Uh, and if there's any prenup stuff. Let's discuss that first. Uh, um, okay, we could, we could have a... I will give you the courtesy of having a conversation about it. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, that is fantastic. And actually, for all of you out there, we want to hear about your thoughts about getting married or being married after 50. Um, is it worth it to you? Do you have some great stories to tell? Do you have some uh, horror stories to tell? Leave us a comment below because we really want to hear about that. Um, and make sure that you hit subscribe and like because not only does that give our show a big boost, but by doing that and by also giving us a great review wherever you listen to your podcast, that allows our show to be pushed up and higher out there in the matrix or whatever it is out there so that we reach more and more gay men over 50 uh, like us so that we can have all of these voices join the conversation with us. So please make sure you hit like and subscribe and give us, give us that five-star review. And always we would love to... Uh, thank you in advance. And Michael, how else can people uh, reach out to us? You guys could also hit us up at no two gays about it at gmail.com. And just remember, it's always the number two. You could also hit us up on social media on Facebook, 
on Instagram and on TikTok at no 2 Gays About It. And a special thanks to Ted Zalewski and Cesar Montiero, who are our executive producer tier subscribers. Not only are they getting our bonus material and also early access to our shows, but they are really supporting both Michael and I and our show. So thank you guys. Uh, This has been awesome. And for all of you out there, also keep moving forward. Until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thank you guys for listening and we'll see.